Well, welcome to Weekly Wisdom. Uh, we are glad you followed us over here to YouTube today. Uh, Facebook did some changes and they changed how it was working and it didn't look like I had access uh, on their new platform to be able to go live. And so what do we do? We shift. Uh, oh man, that's a word in itself. When you begin to find a blockage in doing things the way that you have always done them, sometimes the appropriate response is not to get frustrated, not to get flustered, but to shift. And that's a word for somebody today. I don't know, you've been running into a brick wall over and over again, and there's only so long uh, that you'll be able to continue to, to maintain your momentum as you're running forward into that wall. So sometimes, what you need to do is shift, is shift. Uh, and so I am happy today uh, that I'm able to demonstrate that to you as we go, uh, as we're shifting. But, you know, be patient with me today as we're figuring out this platform. Somebody send me a comment. I want to see what the comments look like uh, in, in this platform to make sure that I'm seeing uh, things and that I'm managing things appropriately. So will you all engage me uh, and allow this to be a test run that may become our new platform? Because you know what? If Facebook want to act up, YouTube is like, hey, come on over here. We got you. We got you. So I wish you would. Can somebody just leave me a, a, a chat um, and let me so that I can see if I can see that because I like to engage with all with you all. Can you chat? Can you chat me? Um, want to see if that will work or if it's not working, maybe you don't have access to it. So I'm just testing it for a minute. I'm not going to be uh, before you a long time once I get going on what I have for you today. Uh, oh, so I'm getting a message that people aren't seeing a chat option, aren't seeing a chat option. And so you cannot chat if you don't see a chat option. Let me see. I'll see if you can see it if I send one to you. Welcome to Weekly Wisdom. Thanks again. Uh, those of you, I see a couple more of you joining in. Thanks for coming over um, and for checking us out on a different platform. Uh, we ran into some technical difficulties. Facebook wasn't, uh, their changes are not apparently allowing or else I couldn't figure out how to go live on their new platform with the changes that they've made. And so today we're going to try out YouTube and we've shifted uh, because we have to find a way to keep going. Uh, and we have to find a way in spite of obstacles and fight of, in spite of challenges. Welcome, welcome. Come on in. Uh, we have to find a way to keep it moving. And so I'm going to share with you a little bit today, uh, kind of along the lines of what we just experienced about when you run into a blockage, when you run into something that causes your progress to be delayed, when we run into something that causes us to have um, a barrier to doing what we are trying to do, sometimes what we need to do is to be flexible enough, to be adaptable enough to shift on the fly. I wish you, I wish you would just say it out loud, chat it if you can figure out how to chat it, whatever you got to do, type it somewhere. I don't care. Do sign language, whatever you got to do, shift. I need you to type that. I'm going to shift. I'm going to shift when I need to shift. And so I want to share uh, with you today from the topic of keep going, keep going. We're going to talk to you just for a minute from the subject of keep going. Uh, and as, as you are thinking about that, I want you to get in mind some of the challenges uh, that you have faced that sometimes make you feel like you must, uh, you must stop. Instead of sometimes instead of changing course, life throws so many setbacks at you that you feel like, no, I can't just adjust. I just have to stop. I give up. I quit. Well, my encouragement for you today is in the areas of your purpose, in the areas of, of your godly assignments, in the areas uh, where you are designed to win, the areas where you have been ordained and guided to have an impact on your sphere of influence, uh, those areas that you have skills, talents, abilities, and influence in that are there with the for the purpose of impacting the world. I want you, when you begin to run into obstacles, to be ready and adaptable enough to shift 
so that you can keep grinding, so that you can hustle, grind, and execute, so that you can maintain your momentum even in the midst of challenges. So a scripture that I have visited with you all before, uh, I'm going to revisit with you uh, today. And I feel like there's some insight just in this one verse, Galatians 6 and 9, that I want to share with you today. The scripture says, and let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Be not weary uh, is how we often say it and, and read it. Be not weary in well-doing. Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season you shall reap if you faint not. Uh, I want to talk to you just for a few minutes today from that subject, uh, keep going, keep going. So be not weary in well-doing. The first thing that we have to do to establish the possibility of realizing and actualizing this commandment that we have in Galatians, in order for us to, not, to be not weary, the first thing that we have to put in order is that we are actually going forth in the activities, in the action, in the assignment of well-doing. Ask yourself the question, am I doing good things? Am I, am I in the process of well-doing? Uh, make sure that you are doing the well-doing part. Uh, and that's the first thing that, that you'll be assigned to do. Do all you can to do all you can. Uh, write it down on your notes, write it down in your comments, whatever you got to do. Do all you can to do all you can. In other words, handle your business and handle God's business. Thank you so much, Camille. I see you figured out chat. Chat works by going directly uh, to the to the YouTube page in YouTube. There's no chat option if you join from the link on Facebook. Gotcha. Uh, okay, we'll figure it out. We'll keep it moving. I kind of like this platform, though. I'm feeling good about it. We'll figure it out. But I need you to think about that. Uh, this scripture has no relevance to you. You cannot uh, control yourself from becoming weary in well-doing unless you first position and posture yourself in the act, action, in the activity. That's the word I'm looking for. In the activity of doing well. What does that mean? Do something that has a positive impact. Do something that will make a difference. Do something that will, that will make your area, your sphere of influence better than you found it. Uh, engage. Here we go. Engage in doing well. Uh, make sure you're doing you're, you're doing the well doing part. Do all that you can to do all that you can. Handle your business. But not only handle your business, handle God's business and the assignment that he has for you. He has called you to do something that nobody else can do the way that you can do it because he has uniquely created and positioned you. Oh, I hope you hear me right there. God has uniquely created and positioned you to be able to do what nobody can, no, nobody else can do the way that you can do it because nobody else has your swag, your style, your flavor, and your flow. So be about the business of being about his business. Oh my goodness. I feel like I'm talking good to you today. Be about the business of being about his business. So you handle your business and you handle his business. And then once you're confident in the fact that you are an engaged in the action, in the activity of doing well, of well-doing, once you're confident in number one, uh, don't then, the scripture says, be not weary in well-doing. Don't allow fatigue and impatience. Oh my goodness. I hope you're with me. Don't allow fatigue and impatience to keep you from keeping on doing well. The enemy has a, a very telegraphed system of attack that he comes against those who are doing well. And what he does is he makes you feel like what you're doing isn't working. He makes you feel like what you're doing is ineffective. He makes you feel like what you're doing doesn't matter. And what that does is it begins to weigh against your ability to remain engaged. It begins to, to attack your ability to stay motivated. And what happens is that then we become weary or we begin to get tired of doing the right thing. Have you ever been tired of doing 
the right thing. Well, the scripture implores us that we looked at today in Galatians 6 and 9 to be not weary in well-doing. Don't allow yourself to get tired of doing the right thing because if you get tired of doing the right thing, the only alternative that remains is for you to do the wrong thing, uh, which is inclusive of doing nothing at all. But the scripture says, be not weary in well-doing. Uh, but then it continues. It continues. And it says, uh, be not weary in well-doing for in due season you shall reap if you faint not. So you have to continue doing what you are, what you feel like you're called to do, what you feel is the right thing to do, what you feel like is your assignment to do. Continue doing it even when it looks like it's not producing the results that you want it to produce. Because what's going to happen is at a given time, at an appointed time, due season. I wish you would say due season. At due season, at that appropriate time, and, and we don't decide what the appropriate time is. We don't have the 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 uh, ability or the authority to determine when we're supposed to get blessed. The only one who has that ability and authority is the blessor. And so what happens is that we keep on doing what we know we're supposed to do. And then at due season, at the appropriate time, when God sees fit, he will begin to unlock and unleash upon you oh, the blessings and the favor of the promises that he's given us in this verse in Galatians 6 and 9. Continue until God decides that your consistency is proven. Oh, good. I feel that real good. You need to continue doing the right thing until God decides that your consistency is is proven. And what happens is many times we get frustrated because we think we passed the test. We grade ourselves and we're like, I'm getting an A plus. It's time for me to move from faith to faith, from glory to glory, from strength to strength. But God has a few more tests to ensure that we are consistent and that our consistency is proven and intact and that the process, oh my God, that he has that he has put us in has equipped us and made us ready for what he has for you. Sometimes he can't release the blessings and the favor that he is he's stored up for you, that he's waiting to, to release to you, not always uh, because, because you aren't doing the right thing, but sometimes because he has to get you ready, and other times he has to get certain platforms and situations and environments ready to be conducive to bring to you what he has for you. So be not weary in well-doing, for in due season, at the appointed time, at the right time when God sees fit, when he determines that your consistency is proven, then he will be ready to release to you what he has for you. Be not weary in well-doing, for in due season you shall reap. Oh my God. Uh, it is reaping time. It is when, once you have proven your consistency, once you have fought through your weariness, once you have continued doing the right thing, even when it seems like it's ineffective, once you have kept on doing the well-doing or doing well, uh, in spite of the fact that other people don't see it the same way that you see it, in spite of the fact that people talk about you, that people doubt you, that people mock you, uh, when you can continue to keep doing the right thing in the face of adversity, then he will say it is due season for what? For you to reap. I wish you would say it wherever you are. It's my reaping time. It's my reaping time. I, I feel that. I feel that real good right now. I'm declaring it for myself. It's my reaping time. It's. I wish you would just bring it into you. It's my reaping time. It's my reaping time. Reaping in the scripture in Galatians 6 and 9, reaping is a promise. Ah, Reaping is a a promise. Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season, it says, we shall reap. We shall reap. Do you hear me? Uh, shall. That means it's going to happen one way or another. Oh my goodness. Your reaping is coming, even if you can't see it. Uh, it, it is a guarantee. It is a shall. It is a law. That word shall denotes that there is a law. It's a law of declaration from the mouth of God. What God says must be. 
<laughs> uh, that's why when light didn't exist, he said, let there be light. And it showed up like, oh, here I am. I didn't even know what I was. God said, you shall reap. You shall reap. Reaping is a promise. You shall reap if you have found mastery in those 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 uh, contextual uh, if then statements that come up at the beginning of this verse, if you don't get tired, be not weary. And if you're doing well, be not weary in well doing, you shall reap. <laughs> if you don't allow yourself to get discouraged and stop doing the things that you know you need to do, then reaping is a promise. Oh, I feel that thing. Reaping is your promise. You will, you shall reap. Uh, you shall reap. The only thing that can cancel out the promise of your reaping is your fainting. <laughs> Be not weary in well-doing, for in due season you we shall reap if, here's the if, <clears throat> excuse me, if we faint not. Be not weary <laughs> and let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. If we faint not. Again, the only thing that can cancel out the promise of your reaping is your fainting. Faint not. Don't allow situations and resistance and pressure and, and, and sadness and doubt. Oh my goodness. These are all the things that begin to creep in that begin to interfere with our reaping. Don't allow uh, your crafty strategies and your fleshly thoughts and desires. Don't allow anything to cause you to lose consciousness of, of the process that God has you in uh, that is going to take you to the place of reaping that he has in store for you. I know sometimes his promises feel like they're taking too long, but don't faint. I know sometimes it feels like other people are getting blessed while you're getting left behind, but don't faint. I know sometimes it feels like more is coming against you than there is with you, but don't faint. I know sometimes it feels like people are misreading your, 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 your hopes and your intentions, but don't faint. I know sometimes you're misunderstood, but don't faint. You have to keep on hustling, grinding and executing, developing and working and doing the things that you know are the right things to do. Be not weary in well-doing for in due season, it's coming, it's coming. You shall reap, guarantee. If you faint not, the only thing that can stop you from reaping is fainting. And so I implore you today, don't give up. Don't give up on your goals. Don't give up on your dreams. Don't give up on your passions. Don't give up on those desires that God has planted on the inside of you. Don't give up on believing in your ability to do what you have not seen done. Don't give up on your bag, your big, hairy, audacious goal. Whatever you do, don't give up. Keep going keep believing, keep trying, and don't give up. That's what I have for you today with Weekly Wisdom. I hope that you have a phenomenal week. Lord, I pray that you bless each and every one under the sound of my voice. I pray uh, that you would begin to uh, give encouragement for people to hold on when they feel like letting go. Yeah. Yes, God. I pray for each and every one under the sound of my voice that they would have the, the power and the tenacity to hold on when they feel like letting go. Because I do believe what I feel rising up in me even right now is that your people are closer than they can ever imagine. You are closer than you think. And so I pray, God, that we will hold on to your process and your promises and that we will not faint, that we will not grow weary and that we will not give up, but instead that we will keep going until we see ah, the harvest, the reaping, the promise, the favor that you have in store for us. And we declare it to be so in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. You all have a phenomenal week. Love you. Thanks for following me over on YouTube. God bless y'all.